hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. This morning, the most high, we get up to say Shema, Israel, Adonai, Eloheinu, Adonai, Akai. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. Blessed be the name of his glorious kingdom forever and ever. Amen. Hallelujah and bless your name.
I don't know about anybody else. He's been teaching me something about my mind, about my heart, about my soul, about my body, about how he created me in his image and in his likeness. But I got to, you know what, think like the most high God would think. So we get up this morning seeking him first, the kingdom of the most high God. And all his righteousness, knowing that all things should be added unto us. Because he is a rewarder to them that diligently seek him. So we're seeking him. Because we want our lifestyle to change. Because Torah is a lifestyle and it teaches us how to live our lives. So therefore, we won't go into ourselves, you know, our hearts, and begin to speak what's really in our hearts. That deep-rooted pain sometimes that we have not, you know, healed from. So I'm thankful, thankful, thankful on the sixth day that he comes with a three-part teaching about the mind of control. Or the control of the mind. You know that takes some... Um, Oh, Lord, self-control. You know, that takes some obedience to the Most High's commandments because his Torah is written on our hearts and on our minds. This is just a obedient walk when it comes to actually the things that are in our mind to kind of be like, you know what? I'm just going to be obedient to what he said, no matter what I feel, my emotions and all of that. I got to push that to the side and begin to walk in total obedience. So do you know this is going to take total obedience? It doesn't matter what somebody say to you, do to you, or what has happened to you, or what you've gone through, or what the situation has been. If it's been something in your childhood, it doesn't matter. Because the most I got is saying, just be obedient to the commandments. Just be obedient. He be like this, how I'm going to do that? Because, I mean, I got some deep-rooted hurt, some family that hurt me, some, you know, friends I thought was my friends and did some things. They done lied to me, lied on me, lied, you know. You be like, how I'm going to just do that? And the most I got is like, just be obedient to the commandments that I have already written on your heart and on your mind and begin to walk it out. So, this is the conclusion Come on, y'all. We started out with the mind and would, you know, be in the conscious. We started out with the heart being the subconscious because whatever's in your heart going to come out your mouth. You know, the word says out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. Then we went into the soul. Oh, my goodness. You know, some things your soul be like, uh, uh no, <laughs> do the right thing. The body be like, but it feels good. And so the soul be like, okay, I don't like it, but I'll go ahead and do it. But then the spirit is like, they're convicting you saying, now, you know, that is not what the most high God will have you to do. But your soul is like, mm -mm, it feels good right now. So this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to teshuva later though. But right now, this is what I'm going to do. You're going to get cussed out and I'm going to teshuva later. Because you know, it feels good sometimes to just go on and just act a fool. But the most high God said, I called you to walk. In self-control. I've called you to be humble and walk out humility. You know, most of the time people think when you humble that you kind of weak. No, humility takes some strength, child. It takes some strength because in humility, you will watch what you say and you ain't going to cut somebody out. So humility is actually strength. Don't ever think humility is being weak. It's not. It's really showing your strength. Because the Most High God says, if you humble yourself, then he will lift you up. So I pray y'all ready for this last part. And then on Sabbath tomorrow, I'm really excited. Because we're going to put it all together and walk through the entire teaching. And it's going to blow our mind. So the word says, through all your getting, get an understanding. And we come to understand some things on the sixth day. Going into some sweet rest with the Most High God. Woo, Lord, don't you glad? Aren't you glad the week does end? <laughs> oh, it's the end of the week, y'all. Aren't you glad this is the sixth day and the week does end? It is a end. Who, Lord, I'm thankful. 
I am so thankful to the most high God this morning that he has us in a place where he is teaching us. You know, haven't y'all been thinking about this teaching all week long? Like, oh, Lord, I can't say that. I can't do that. Oh, Lord, I'm about to remember some things. I might need to be quiet. James said to study to be quiet. How do you study to be quiet? The most I got said, you just don't say nothing, Dr. J. Oh, Lord. Okay, I, I want to say something right now, but I'm studying to be quiet. I really want to go off right now, but I'm studying to be quiet. You got to study to be quiet. Especially when you got a heart condition, you got to really study to be quiet. You be looking at folks like, you know what she just said? Mm -mm, I don't know what she said because I'm studying to be quiet. <laughs> oh, Lord. Almost said Jesse made another one. <laughs> you know, you got to study to be quiet. Girl, you know what she just did? Oh, Lord. No. I don't know what she did because I, you know, I'm studying to be quiet, Marie. You know, you got to study to be quiet. That's in the word. I mean, if you really break that down, you would be quick to listen, slow to speak. Because <laughs> you studying to be quiet. Come on, James. Tell him. Study to be quiet. Because out of the abundance of your heart, oh, Lord, your mouth won't say some things. Okay. All right, I'm just going to study to be quiet. All right now, uh, and, and I'm being corrected. That's 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, verse 11. And that ye study to be quiet and to do your own. I can't even see the rest of that thing. But um, that's 1 Thessalonians. I'm thinking about James saying your tongue is the smallest member of your body. But uh, you, you can't even bridle that thing. You, you can't control it. You'd be like, I'm going, I'm not, um, I'm not going to say that. But first Thessalonians chapter four, verse 11 said, and that ye study to be quiet and to do your own business. Ooh, Lord. <laughs> and to work with your own hands as we commanded you. Huh? Oh, Lord. First Thessalonians chapter four, verse 11. I will read that again. Okay. And that ye study to be quiet and to do your own business. See, y'all being folks' business. See, I'm talking about right there. The words say right there, and to do your own business. And to work with your own hands as we commanded you. That's your, every time you think you won't say something, because you know, out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speak. First Thessalonians chapter 4, verse 11. Man, he giving us some, he giving us some principles to walk out. You understand me? You be like this. I just can't do it. <clears throat> First Thessalonians chapter four, verse 11. Mm -hmm. and, and that ye shall study to be quiet. Yeah. And, and to uh, do your own business. <laughs> Mind your business. <laughs> and to work with your own hands. It's a command. As we have commanded you. He got so many commandments. And that's in the New Testament. Y'all talking about the law been done away with. He telling you to study to be quiet. As you have been commanded. What? Now say something. Oh no, I'm studying to be quiet. Hey, you got an opinion? Uh-uh. I'm studying to be quiet. All right now. Thank you, Most High God. Thank you so much. You're amazing. I just love you so much. See, that's wisdom, isn't it? That's sure enough wisdom. I'm so excited about the teaching right now. That was enough for me right here. We can shut down and walk out of this day. You just need to study to be quiet. So if you studying how to be quiet, then you ain't saying nothing. <laughs> so where's your out of the abundance of the heart? The mouth speak. I got something on my mind. I just want to say, uh -uh, not according to 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, verse 11. I wish you would. <clears throat> Hello, somebody. What you thinking about? I'm studying to be quiet. <laughs> What's on your mind? Oh, I'm studying to be quiet. And I'm minding my own business, too. He said, <laughs> and do your own business. You know, that comes with that, you know, gossipers and slanderers and all them things. If y'all would just study to be quiet and mind your own business, we would be all right. 
<laughs> Thank you, Most High, for that scripture. And I'm thinking James said it. And it's in Thessalonians. Child, no. Girl, I'm telling you right now, the Torah is life. <laughs> Yeshua said, I came that you would study to be quiet it and mind your own business. All right now, Most High God, happy sixth day. Set your table and be quiet. Light your candles and be quiet. Break that bread. Come on now. You know you've been braiding that bread and you all mad and stuff. Your heart about to say some things at the Er Shabbat table. And that First Thessalonians chapter 4 verse 11 jumps up. I dare you to say it. <laughs> well, I'm studying to be quiet right now. So you're so lucky you're not going to get cussed out today. <laughs> he commanded me. <clears throat> His Torah is written on my heart and on my mind. Ooh, Lord. If we would just be obedient to that. It's going to take your obedience. So every time you say you can't do something, there go right there. <laughs> I love it how we say, I just can't do it. Well, first Thessalonians say you can't do it. If you study to be quiet and mind your own business. Don't forget that piece. <laughs> and you know how sometimes y'all say, I was minding my own business. And then here she come. <sighs> but if you study to be quiet, it don't matter if she coming. Because you're going to keep minding your own business because you studying to be quiet. It don't matter if she came or not, right? right? You know what, Dr. J? Sometimes you just need to be quiet. I know, right? <laughs> Because this is a walk. And we are going to get it right. You are without excuse. According to, according to 1 Thessalonians chapter 4 verse 11. You are without excuse. Now tell me what else you can do. Thank you Holy Spirit. Your body, your soul, and your mind. If it was study 1 Thessalonians chapter 4 verse 11. I said how I study to be quiet though. Study the word crazy person. If I'm telling you to study, to be quiet, go pick up one of my principles and apply it to your life and close your mouth. Oh, Lord. And then mind your own business. Oh, Lord. <laughs> what you doing? I'm studying 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, verse 11. <laughs> what you doing? Oh, I'm studying, uh, you know, Genesis chapter 1, verse 1. And I'm being quiet and minding my own business. Okay. <laughs> Thank you, Holy Ghost, this morning. So, that's what we're going to walk in. I'm studying to be quiet. So you don't get cussed out, beat up, and cut. <laughs> you know what I mean? You want to cut some folks. Oh, Lord. We just going to mind our own business, Marie. April, Evelyn. Uh-huh. We're going to mind our own business, and we're going to study to be quiet. Got it? All right. Thank you, Most High, for that command as we commanded you. Oh, Lord. That, that, that just sounds like you can't. Ain't no wiggle room. Just be quiet. So no, that's all you got to do. Oh, Lord. All right. There you go. Who Most High? I come lifting up everyone on Facebook Live this morning. The ones that will listen live and the ones that will listen later. You got one word for them. Be quiet. Study. Mind your business. Thank you, Mosai. That's your word. That ain't Dr. J. That sure sound like me though saying that. Thank you, Mosai. Study to be quiet. According to 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, verse 11. And, and just decrease me as you give the increase. When I open my mouth, you speak for me. I'm going to walk into your words. Your will, your way, because your word is a light unto my feet and a lamp unto my path. And I thank you right now for lighting all of us up. Thank you. Let there be light. And there was light. Giving you all the glory, all the honor, and all the praise. And it's in the mighty, mighty name oh, of Yeshua HaMashiach, I pray. Amen, 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 and amen. He's coming for your body and your soul. Because your soul was trying to tell you some things yesterday. And now the most high God done put 1 Thessalonians chapter 4 on your soul. Oh, how good it feel now. So it don't, I'm studying to be quiet. Okay. <clears throat> so now, are you ready? Yes, Lord. For the word of God, the father of Abraham, the father of Isaac. 
Isaac, the father of Jacob. You so good, Mosai. Are you ready for the word of God? The father of Abraham, the father of Isaac, the father of Jacob. This morning, we are coming out of the book of Romans. Romans chapter 8 in its entirety. Okay, this morning, we are coming out of the book of Romans. Romans chapter 8 in its entirety, and it reads, There is therefore now no condemnation to them which are in Mashiach, Yahushua, who walk not after the flesh, but after the spirit, oh, it's coming alive now for the law of the spirit of life and Mashiach, Yahashua, had made me free from the law of sin and death. Come on, most high God, for what law could do, could not do, and that it was weak through the flesh, the most high God sending his own son in the likeness of sinful flesh and for sin condemned sin in the flesh. That the righteousness of the law might be fulfilled in us who walk not after the flesh, but after the Ruach. For they that are after the flesh do mind the things of the flesh. But they that are after the Ruach, the things of the Ruach. For to be carnally minded is death. But to be spiritually minded is peace. Life in peace. Because the carnal mind is enmity against the most high God. For it is not subject to the law of the most high God. Neither indeed can be. So then they that are in the flesh cannot please the most high God. But ye are not in the flesh, but in the spirit, and so be that the spirit of the most high God dwell in you. Now, if any man have not the spirit of Mashiach, he is none of his. And if Mashiach be in you, the body is dead. Come on, soul. The body is dead because of sin, but the Ruach, the spirit, is life because of righteousness. But if the spirit of him that raised up Yahushua from the dead dwell in you, he that raised up Mashiach from the dead shall also quicken your mortal bodies by his Ruach that dwelleth in you. Oh, wow. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Therefore, 5 a.m. prayer, brethren, we are debtors not to the flesh, to live after the flesh. For if ye live after the flesh, ye shall die. But if ye through the Ruach do mortify the deeds of the body, ye shall live. What you say? For as many as are led by the spirit of the most high God, they are the sons of the most high God. For ye have not received the spirit of bondage again to fear, but ye have received the spirit of adoption, whereby we cry, Abba, Father. The Ruach itself bears witness with our Ruach that we are the children of, of the most high God. And if we. If, and if children. Then heirs. Heirs of the most high God. And joint heirs with Mashiach. If so be that we suffer. With him. That we may be also glorified. Together. For I reckon that the suffering. Of this present time. Are not worthy to be compared. When the glory. Which shall be revealed in us. For the earnest expectation. Of the creature waiteth For the manifestation. Of the sons of the most high God. For the creature was made subject to vanity. Not willingly. But by reason of him. Which has subjected the same. In hope. Because the creature itself. Also shall be delivered from the bondage of the corruption into the glorious liberty of the children of the most high God for we know that the whole creation groaneth 
and travailing in pain together until now. And not only they, but ourselves also, which have the first fruits of the Ruach. Even we ourselves groan within ourselves, waiting for the adoption to wit the redemption of our body. For we are saved by hope. But hope that is seen is not hope. For what a man seeth, why does he yet hope for? But if we hope for what we see not, then do we with patience wait for it. Likewise, the Ruach also helpeth our infirmities, for we know not what we should pray for as we ought. But the Ruach itself maketh intercessions for us with groaning, which cannot be uttered. And he that searches the heart knoweth what the mind of the Spirit because he make intercession for the saints according to the Torah of the Most High God, which is the will. And we know that all things work together for them that love the Most High God to them who are the called according to his purpose. We better start quoting that right. To them who are the called. According to his purpose. For whom he did foreknown. He also did predestined to be conformed to the image of his son. He conforming us now to the image of his son. That he might be the firstborn among many brethren. Moreover, whom he did predestinate. Them he also called. And whom he called, them he also justified. And whom he justified, them he also glorified. What shall we say to these things? If the most high God be for us, who can be against us? He that spares not his own son, but delivered him up. For us all, how shall he not with him also freely give us all things? Who shall lay anything to the charge of the most high God's elects? It is the most high God that justify it. Who is he that condemneth? It is Mashiach that died, yea, rather, that is risen again, who is even at the right hand of the most high God, who also maketh intercession for us. Who shall separate us from the love of Mashiach? Shall your mind, your heart, your body, your soul, shall tribulations or distress or persecution or famine or nakedness or peril or the sword as it is written for thy sake. We are killed all the day long. We are counted as sheep for the slaughter. Nay, in all things, we are more than conquerors through him that loved us. For I am persuaded that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor powers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor height, nor death, nor either other creatures shall be able to separate us from the love of the Most High God, which is in Mashiach Yahushua, our Lord. May the Most High God add a blessing to the reading and hearing of His Most Holy Word. What's the purpose of the Most High? And all of this, um, we're talking about control of the mind. What's the purpose of the Most High in all of this? Firstly, man is the spirit 
He lives in a body, possesses a soul. That's what man is. Say it again. Firstly, man is the spirit. He lives in a body, possesses a soul. That's what man is. I am going to say that again. Man is a spirit. He lives in a body and he possesses a soul. Whoever controls the soul rules the man that is. That's the point of the original purpose of the Most High, therefore, was to rule the seen world from the unseen world through the unseen man living in the same body on the scene. What you say? The original purpose of the Most High, therefore, was to rule the seen world from the unseen world. Through the unseen man. Living in the same body. On the sea. The most high wanted to control the world. Through you. Say it again. The most high wanted to control the world. Through you. But he wanted to do it. From the unseen world. Through your unseen spirit. Living in your seen. Physical body. He wanted to do that. On the seen earth. So that he, so that his will, which is invisible, could be seen visibly through your actions and through your execution of his instructions. The Most High wanted to rule the world through you, all without coming to the world. By and through your spirit, the soul is the Most High's media for the kingdom rulership. It is very important to understand this. The Most High wants to rule the world through your soul. That's why the Bible says in 3 John chapter 2, Beloved, I wish above all things that thou mayest prosper and be in health, even as thou soul prosperest. 5 a.m. prayer. Notice the focus. Even as your soul prospers. The Most High places the number one prosperity focus on your soul. If you're not prospering in your soul, the Most High says you are poor in every other area. So, if you're not getting the right information, you are actually destroying your life. The vet, this is very important. The kingdom of the most high is a kingdom of the soul. If the kingdom doesn't get in your soul, the kingdom can't get to the earth. What you say? If the kingdom doesn't get in your soul, the kingdom can't get to the earth. I will say that again. If the kingdom of the most high cannot get into your soul, it cannot get into the earth. If it cannot get into your heart, the earth will never see the rulership of the most high. Rulership begins in the heart. That is where it is. And it and until it gets there, there will be no kingdom manifesting in the earth. I hope you prosper as your soul prospereth. The first word, Yahushua, in his public ministry in Matthew chapter 4, verse 17. From that time, Yahushua began to preach and to say, repent. For the kingdom of heaven is at hand. The word repent means he wants you to change your mind. The word repent means what to change your mind. Turn from your current path to teshuva and change your direction. Where is your mind? It is in your soul. His first Attention was given to the soul. If I can get your soul changed, 
He says, then the kingdom can come from heaven on earth. Oh, Lord. Here is a very important point. And that is the kingdom of darkness is the kingdom of this, of the soul also. The Most High is battling for your soul. So is Hasatan. That's my point for the whole day. Hasatan and the Most High, oh Lord. Hasatan and the Most High are not really after your body. Even though that's important for the earth, they're really after your soul. This is really important because whoever controls your soul controls you. I think we become spooky. We forget where the battle is. We become so spiritually spooky that we have actually invented demons that don't exist. And we are fighting things that aren't there. And the real battle... We've, we're missing. I was studying the life of Yahushua. And some of the thoughts that he expressed is incredible. He was always going after the mind. Always. He said, if you hear my teachings, you listen to my teachings. If you follow my words, this is my word. He said, my words are spirit and they give you life. He's trying to get in through your soul. If I can get your mind changed, you'll be satisfied. It's a battle for the mind. So we got two kingdoms and both are after your soul. What is your soul? Your mind, your will, your emotions. What is your soul? Your mind, your will, your emotions. That is why most of you are losing your battles. Think about it. Emotions. What do you think is making you keep going back to that situation that you know is wrong? It's your emotions. Hasatan got you, man. One phone call and your knees get weak. Emotions. You've gone back to the ungodly relationship. The battle is over the minute you feel your knees getting weak. And you start leaving the house. And you drive there. You know the Holy Ghost is screaming at you. Stop. Turn around. Don't go back there. He doesn't love you. Stop it. Stop. Stop. And you still drive. It's a battle. And the battle doesn't stop. Because you know the Bible. What you say? It's a battle. And the battle doesn't stop. Because you know the Bible, it's a battle. And the battle doesn't stop because you know the Bible. You have got to grab your body and listen to the Holy Spirit. Emotions, we got to watch that. We say the soul is the most high's media. Let's talk about media. The word media. The word media is from the word media. Come on now. There is an attack on your soul like you can never believe. You got 725 channels in your house with a remote control and every button is after your soul. <laughs> so good. Huh? You got 725 channels in your house with a remote control, and every button is after your soul. 
So you better understand what they are doing. Every radio station and every number on the radio dial is after your soul. This is not entertainment. This is containment. Yeah. What, Marie? This is not entertainment. This is containment. They want to contain you. They want to control you. And that's what it's all about. It's about the media. The media is from the word medium. It means to stand between. Oh my gosh. Yes. <coughs> Excuse me. It means to stand between. In other words, the media is the thing between the source and the object. We showed you an example just now. We saw the spirit of a man and the body of a man. Well, the media is the one in the middle. That's the one that decides which receives what. Yes. That's what medium is. The word medium means to meditate. Yahushua HaMashiach is called the mediator between the Most High and man. The Bible says there's only one medium between the Most High and man, only one. And who's that? The man HaMashiach Yahushua. HaMashiach is not one of the prophets between the most high and man. It says there is only one mediator. The Bible says there is one mediator between the most high and man, and it's the man, Hamashiach, Yahushua. That means anybody else will give you distorted communication. Yes. That means anybody else will give you distorted communication. Media means to interpret. Oh, Lord, when Dr. Miles Monroe would travel to foreign countries and he would speak to thousands of people in these big meetings, he spoke English, they spoke Portuguese. He spoke English, they spoke Russian. He spoke English, they speak French. He spoke English. They speak Spanish. He's standing there and they put between him and the people this guy. Now he had to hope that this guy is telling them what he said. Not only did he have to hope that the guy understands it himself, what he was saying, but interpret as well. That's what the media is. That means the chances of you getting the wrong message is so high when the meteor, mediator is in question. Yes. So between Dr. Miles Monroe and the 10,000 people sitting there is a mediator, the interpreter. Who's the most important in the whole scenario? The mediator, the interpreter. As important as the speaker is, the mediator is more important. Oh, Lord. And as important as those thousand people are, he's more important than they are. Why? He determines what they hear. When you turn that radio on, that TV, or that CD, you are taking a chance. Huh? When you turn that radio on, that TV, that CD, you are taking a chance. When you open a book that you just brought, you are taking a chance. You have got to pray. 
What you say? You have got to pray. That's why you have been so messed up in reading the Bible. Because we are the mediator between us and our understanding. We got to depend on our concepts and hope they are right. The media controls the message. Therefore, the quality and the meaning are the essence of the communication. The media controls the message. Now, the source does not control the message. The source knows what he wants to say. But the source has to totally depend on the media to get it right. If the media gets it wrong, then the people, the object of that message will get it wrong. That is why we cannot just allow anyone to teach the world. And they're teaching to the world. Every channel you turn to, media can corrupt, clarify, prevent, or protect the integrity of a message. It can do all those things. It can corrupt it, it can prevent it, or it can clarify it. It can protect it or destroy it. The medium is the most powerful thing in communication. The media controls what the receiver hears, thinks, and understands. So we need to make sure that the medium that we are using is communicating the right message to the hearers because the hearers will get whatever the media gives them. Think of two men kissing on your TV and your son, your daughter watching it. Two women kissing and they are watching it and you are sitting there. You don't even know it. You better check the medium in your house. You better check the medium in your house. Why? It's controlling what your children think. How do you fight that? You come right in and say, this is Dr. J. And I am here to correct and clarify what they just perverted. In other words, you don't back out of it, you get in the middle of it. You have got to fix it. You have got to correct it. You have to clarify it. Why? The Bible says, be in the word. Get in there. Don't be a part of it, but be in there. The Most High considered mediation as a dangerous power and he warned us the use and abuse of it. The Most High is very sensitive about mediums. Why? The thing in the middle is dangerous. So the Most High has a very strong sensitivity to mediums and media. Leviticus chapter 20, verse 27. It says a man or woman who is a medium or a spiritless among you must be put to death. The Most High says, look if. They are meditating and not representing me. You kill them. Now that is tough. That's a tough law. The Most High says, look, if they prophesy and I didn't talk to them, kill them. Do you know what they did to any prophet 
who didn't prophesy correctly, they stoned him to death. In other words, the Most High says, kill the media that's not representing me. Kill them. Put, don't put them away. Destroy them. That's how dangerous the media is to the Most High. It's a death sentence. What you say? It's a death sentence. Deuteronomy chapter 18 verse 10. It says that let no one be found among you who sacrifices his daughter or son in the fire, who practices divination or sorcery, interprets omens, engages in witchcraft, or casts spells, or who is a medium or spiritualist, or who consults the dead. The Most High says they may, the Most High says they may, I don't know. They, ooh, I don't know what that's supposed to say. The Most High says, they may not be among you. The Most High says, now let me tell you something. You are an abomination. You're trying to get information from me through somebody I didn't set up. The Most High says, you shouldn't be among it. First Samuel chapter 28. Watch the results of the wrong media. Saul then said to his attendants, find me a woman who was in the media. Find me someone who's in the middle. I need a media. Show me a medium so I may go and inquire of her. The Most High isn't talking to me directly. Let me go higher. A witch, he says. When Saul did this, it says, here now, he misused and abused the kingdom of the Most High. Here's what it says in 1 Chronicles chapter 10, verse 13. It says, and Saul died because he was unfaithful to the Lord. He did not keep the word of the Most High and even consulted a medium for guidance. Saul died because the Most High killed him. This man made a mistake, but the Most High wasn't mad at him. But he consulted the wrong media to get information. What are you doing at two o'clock in the morning on the internet? Ooh, what do you consult? Where do you search to get information about life? The Most High said he died because he chose the wrong media to listen to. What books do you buy? What stations do you keep your radio tuned into your car? What is constantly being said to your conscious mind and downloaded eventually in your heart? That's the power of the media. Hasata is after your soul. And Saul lost his because he went after the wrong media. So the Most High put him to death and turned the kingdom over to who? David. Now, I want you to follow David's life versus Saul's life. David had serious media. The largest song book in the Bible was written by this man. It's called the book of Saul's. In other words, if you can't find good media, write your own. 
Let's talk about the first use of the media before anything existed. What did the Most High use for the media? This is interesting. The first media was simply the word. <laughs> the first media was simply the word. The word is the medium used by the Most High to communicate his will, his desire, his thoughts, and that resulted in what? The creation of the world. In other words, the Most High had an idea in his mind. He used the media of the word to get it out. And the word produced creation. In other words, the meditation between the Most High and creation is the word. So the first one to introduce media is the Most High himself. And the word was his first media. And today it is still more powerful than the media. It's the most powerful media. What you hear will either kill you or save you. Genesis chapter 1 says, And the Most High said in verse 3, verse 6, And the Most High said in verse 9, And the Most High said in verse 11, And the Most High said in verse 14, And the Most High said in verse 20, And the Most High said in verse 24, And the Most High said in verse 26, And the Most High said, The Most High did everything by using this medium of of the word. John chapter 1 verse 1 through 3 it says in the beginning was the word and the word was with the most high and the word was the most high and the same word and the beginning was with the most high. Important thing here is to notice the word is the most high. Do you see that? Okay, let me explain why. This word is important. It's the word logo. The Hebrew and the Greek for logos is actually means expression of thought. So if you were to read that verse and use the literal meaning, it sounds like this. In the beginning was the expression of the Most High's thoughts. And the Most High's thoughts was the Most High. And the Most High was his thoughts. All things were made by the thoughts of the Most High that were expressed. Amen, 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 and amen. Oh Lord, oh Lord, oh Lord, hallelujah, and bless your name, oh Lord, I want to run up out of here, the spirit is crazy, hallelujah, and bless your name most high, go ahead. <laughs>
together for Sabbath teaching tomorrow. Y'all start putting it out there. Tomorrow at noon, we gonna teach this from the beginning all the way to the end. Oh my goodness! This was so good. This has been an awesome ride from Tuesday all the way to the sixth day. Oh my goodness. <clears throat> From day three all the way to day six, I'm about to enter into some sweet Sabbath rest. You best to believe that. I'm about to enter into some sweet Sabbath rest. All right now, get ready. Mississippi Gulf Coast, Biloxi, Ocean Springs, Gulf Port, all the way to New Orleans, Slidell. Come on now, Morris Point, Bay St. Louis. There's going to be a conference on the Mississippi Gulf Coast at the Grand, oh Lord, Centennial Plaza Hotel at 200 East Boulevard, Gulfport, Mississippi. We are excited for this one-day conference, and it is free. The title of this conference is Understanding the Law. Oh, Lord, you don't want to miss this one-day conference beginning at noon. Again, it is free. Come on, Mississippi Gulf Coast, Ocean Springs, you better wake up. Come on, Biloxi, Gulfport, Past Christian, Moss Point, Gaucher. Come on and wake up because 5 a.m. prayer is coming to the coast to give you an understanding of the law. So get to the blog spot, get to Facebook, get to YouTube. It will encourage you. Have a supernatural six day. I love you, love you, love you. Ooh, I love you. Bye now. So good. Amazingly good. Hallelujah and glory to his name.